It looks like more AIBs are gearing up for a potential release of the RX 6700 XT. There are also some changes being made to the RTX 3080 Ti, and crypto miners are now buying gaming laptops in bulk? What has the world come to? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. When it comes to new PC hardware releases, rumors, and leaks, things seem to have calmed down a bit compared to the last few months, where it felt like almost every single day we would be hearing news about a new GPU SKU or a new benchmark leak of some new processor. Of course, ignoring the whole availability fiasco, it was exciting and it gave everyone a lot to look forward to. However, with all the major releases behind us, there's going to be a slowdown in these types of content pieces, which is why I've been more focused on doing very various types of benchmarking videos and exploring other topics like cooling performance tests and more. With that said though, we still have some more upcoming hardware we can look forward to from the likes of AMD, Intel, and Nvidia. AMD and the Radeon Technologies group did shake up the GPU market, finally bringing back some much needed competition with cards such as the RX 6800 XT and 6900 XT. Those cards only targeted the high-end and enthusiast segment, and despite selling out like crazy, most gamers, the most popular segment is the range market where cards like the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti are going to be the most popular since those cards are obviously a lot cheaper than the high-end models and you know offer the best bang for the buck in regards to performance per dollar. So many people in the GPU market have been highly anticipating AMD's solution for the mid-range, a solid competitor to the RTX 3060 Ti the RX 6700 XT. This leads us into our first topic which comes from Komachi on Twitter who's a known hardware leaker surrounding AMD products. They made a post on the 3rd of February showing a screenshot from the EAC or Eurasian Economic Committee where many companies register products and SKUs. In particular, this screenshot shows us that Gigabyte is registering a few new 6700 XT SKUs. Now this isn't unusual, at this point I'm sure you're all aware of the fact that every company will have multiple SKUs for one GPU, so Gigabyte will be releasing their usual gaming OS see Eagle, Oris, and other cards for the 6700 XT. Among the SKUs, you can actually see 12GD in the name which correlates to the amount of memory the cards will have, therefore confirming that the 6700 XT will indeed have 12GB of GDDR6 memory. AMD is always pretty generous with the amount of VRAM they tack onto their cards. I mean, back in 2016, they stuck on 8GB on an RX 470, while the 1060 at most had like 6GB, but you can see NVIDIA also being more cautious of this as their recently announced mid-range card, the 3060 non-TI, has a 12GB memory buffer, which is higher than the 3060 Ti, even the 3080. Then following a few days after, we had seen another post from Komachi, this time showing us a screenshot from the EEC again, where ASRock, who are also another huge board partner for AMD, registering a few new models for the 6700 XT. However, things get more interesting with this one as we can see two more different SKUs, those being the 6700 non-XT and the 6600 XT, which we haven't really heard much of until recently. Now we know that when AMD would announce the 6700 XT, there will probably be a further cut down Navi 22 chip, just like how there was with the 5700 series where they had a 5700 XT and 5700. However, what's intriguing to note here is that the 6700 only has 6 gigabytes of VRAM. This could either mean that this mid-range GPU will only have half the memory buffer as the full Navi 22 chip, or there might be a 12 gigabyte variant that hasn't just been listed yet. As for performance, I'm fairly certain that the 6700 XT should sit in between a 3070 and 3060 Ti, or you know, if you're looking at things from last generation perspective, then it's going to sit in between a 2080 Ti and 2080 Super. And if they price it around $450 MSRP, which you know I know it doesn't mean jack shit these days, but let's pretend the market was normal, then it would be a pretty decent deal and actually a smart play from AMD because if you think about it, someone looking at the 3060 Ti could say, hey, for 50 bucks more. I could get a card with more performance. Alternatively, one could also look at this as buying a cheaper 3070, which then, you know, they would say, why would I pay $500 for a 3070 when I can save a bit of money and get similar performance? So it'd be a nice psychological play there from AMD. 
I don't know if they'll approach it that way, but hey, this is just speculation on my end. The 6700 non-XT should probably sit in between the 3060 and 3060 Ti, probably closer to the 3060 Ti, and target the mid $300 market. However, that 6 gigabytes of VRAM makes the card look pretty pathetic if you ask me, especially considering how the 3060 has 12 gigabytes. I'm hoping this is either a cut down SKU, which will go for a bit cheaper, like $300, and there will be a 12 gigabyte model for around $350, because it's 2021 and 6 gigabytes should only be reserved for the entry level. It's just way too little for a mid range card that will most likely be targeting the 1440p market. As for the RX 6600 XT, this card also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which, you know, is probably further indication which we should see a 12 gigabyte 6700 non XT. As, you know, it'll just be weird if AMD releases a lower end card which has more VRAM than a mid range card, but then again, Nvidia just did the same thing. I don't know, it's pretty strange. As for performance, if I had to guess how fast this card would be, because there's honestly not a whole lot of info out there to go by, I'd, I'd say it's probably going to match the previous generation 5700 XT and, you know, target the mid $200 price point. Again, if the market was normal, then, you know, I'd be okay with a GPU like this and it would probably get my recommendation. It's still fairly early to talk about this, so who knows what this card will actually perform like. What we do know is that at CES 2021, if you were watching that event and, you know, you hadn't fallen asleep considering how much of a snooze fest it was, at one point Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD, did confirm we'd be seeing new mainstream RDNA 2 graphics cards released in the first half of 2021. And if you look at the background image, you can see two new reference card designs, one of which has a very small form factor, which kind of reminds me of the old R9 Nano, and another model which looks similar to the 6800 series, but with two fans, indicating we should see multiple models, not just one. Hence, now we're seeing the leaks of the 6600 XT. So it should be pretty interesting. Like I said, the mainstream market has been, you know, the most interesting to me as this is the market that most buyers flock towards as it offers the best bang for the buck and these past few years unfortunately have just been awful. Speaking of more GPUs, shifting our attention to Nvidia and we've gotten an update in regards to the upcoming RTX 3080 Ti where recently we had seen some rumors from Copite who's a known hardware leaker for Nvidia GPUs and they've mentioned that the 3080 Ti was supposed to be a GPU with the same amount of CUDA cores as the RTX 3090 but with only 20 gigabytes of G6X memory and a slimmer memory bus. Now we're learning that Nvidia has changed the specs for this model and it's instead going to be a GPU with 10,240 CUDA cores so slightly less than the 3090 and a 12GB G6X memory buffer. Now, I'm not going to be spending too much time on this topic because this is a pointless graphics card. Sure, it might fit into that $1,000 spot in the GPU market, but right now the market is so messed up and the situation is so convoluted, pricing is going to be much higher than what they listed at, which kind of defeats the purpose and makes this conversation pointless. Also, I've reviewed both the 3090 and 3080 and the difference between the two cards is already so damn narrow that the overall differences were barely noticeable in the majority of titles. So this isn't going to add anything new at all, in fact I'm still going to be recommending the 3080 as it'll be delivering like 95-99% to 99 of its performance while still being considerably cheaper. But you know this is Nvidia and they're known for releasing pointless cards like the Super Series last generation and um, you know we also had the 1070 Ti which you know, sat in between the 1070 and 1080, which was a little bit closer to the 1080 and just pretty much cannibalized it. So they do weird stuff like this and it's not unknown or surprising to see this. Unless you're absolutely sure you could make use of that VRAM amount, which by the way at 4K at 3080 will continue to do just fine until Ampere remains relevant, then I don't see the point in buying this GPU, because I always see people worrying about the 3080's lower VRAM amount, and I'm not so sure as to why they're stressing so much about it. As for a release date, video cards have mentioned they do have some information on an internal roadmap, which suggests that we should see the RTX 3080 Ti launch in April of this year, which would make sense, because... Recently, NVIDIA did announce dates for their annual GTC conference, which will be held from April 12th to the 16th of this year, so that lines up. Hey, if you want a more expensive RTX 3080, then here's your chance. As for the last topic, I just briefly wanted to talk about this as I thought it was just quite comical considering the current circumstances of the GPU market. This was posted by a user on Twitter by the name of iLeakVN, showing pictures of a crypto mining setup using laptops with 3060s. 
So now since crypto miners can't get their hands on GPUs, they're going after gaming laptops, which just goes to show you how ridiculous the situation has become. Ethereum has reached another all-time high recently, making Ethereum mining pretty popular. I just didn't foresee it coming to the point where now these guys will be building full-on laptop mining setups. <laughs> so this is just crazy. So if there was any bit of hope for the situation to improve, well, looks like we've still got a very long road ahead of us.